Hey Hacksters, what's up? It's another Monday, which means it's another uh, mailbag slash MCU Monday, and I have for you today the Blist Nano. It's a very exciting little board. Uh, let's just open it up. I have previously opened this one, so it's not a totally blind unboxing, unfortunately, but I wanted to make sure that I have some info for you that's going to be super useful as we check this out. Um, so this is uh, known as the Blist Nano. Let me actually pull this up for you. Uh -huh. um, here we go. Uh, it's coming to Crowd Supply soon, and it's a teeny tiny little Bluetooth board. So let's look at it in person. Uh, and then we'll check out the sheets of information that I got with it. There's actually four things in this package. It's ridiculous. Uh, very generous from iSyst Technologies. Um, what have we got here? We've got a thing called an IDAP lick, which we'll get to later. Uh, the star of the show is the Blist Nano, uh, and there's two other PCBs that it's come with. Um, so they actually gave me two of the, the Nano boards, and I want to do a little live soldering later on to mount these on their PCBs, but check this out. This is a really cool sensor breakout board which we'll talk about in a sec. Wow. Uh, the module goes there, and here is the actual module itself. That's the Bliss Nano. It's got an embedded ceramic antenna, uh, so that's why you've got the little antenna keep out there. You can mount it like that. Uh, it breaks out 34 pins, including 30 GPIOs, which is just wow. And there's a bunch of PWMs and some ADCs or DACs. No, it's DACs. Uh, yeah, and this is a little sensor board that it comes with. What does it say? Blue I.O. tag EVM Rev0, copyright 2018, iSyst Inc. Um, I probably miscapitalized uh, mis uh, their name <laughs> in the thing. So this doesn't actually have any of the little modules and stuff on it, uh, which is sad because I wanted to turn it into a belt buckle. Wouldn't this be an awesome, like, sensorified belt buckle. I think that'd be so rad, but I'll have to wait, I guess. Ugh, I hate waiting. And there's also this other more regular sort of PCB breakout guy. Do, 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 do. Come here. Um, and you've got this guy going here again, and it's just a more general sort of breakout. Um, both of these are programmed with a JTAG debugging connector. Uh, check it out. Here's a little coin cell battery holder. It's not just any uh, battery though. This one's got a huge one because it's a chargeable manganese lithium battery. Uh, cool. So let's have a look at the data on here. Uh, I'm gonna have to refocus a little bit. There we go. So here, there's actually three whole user guides here. Whew! <laughs> Incredible. But this is the most interesting one, I think. Um, do 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 goes through the features. This is also what you'll find on the Crowd Supply page. You've got a 32-bit ARM Cortex-M4F, 64 MHz, 2.4 GHz transceiver with Bluetooth 5 LE. Uh, I haven't heard a lot about Bluetooth 5 before, so this is pretty exciting. Uh, 64K SRAM, 512 kilobytes of flash, da, 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 da. 30 configurable I.O. pins. Whoa! 30! Like on this teeny tiny little thing, and you can of course design your own little breakout for it too. SparkFun's done one before, but never with as many like um, cool features as this. Uh, and yeah, the, the actual chip is the NRF 52832, the ultra-low power system on a chip from Nordic Semiconductor. Uh, some more cool stuff, it's got a Type 2 NFC A tag with wake up on field, which I think is neat. It sounds like it does a lot of stuff to save energy for you, so you don't have to charge it too much. Um, I actually pulled up a page on the different types of NFC signaling because I was like curious about like what exactly is NFC A, and especially Type 2 NFC A. I didn't catch the, the, the type to part of it, but um, our, corresponds with RFID type A communication, da, 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 da. Miller encoding, also known as delay encoding, is used with amplitude modulation at 100%. Uh, signal sent between devices must change from 0 to 100% to register the difference between sending a 1 and a 0. This data is transmitted at 106 kilobytes per second using this. 
Q. Um, put that away again. And, well, I might as well keep it up on the website because it's a little easier for you to look at, probably. Um, <laughs> uh, eight configurable ADCs. There we go. Digital microphone interface. Uh, I2S. Um, PWM pins, up to four of them. AES hardware encryption, which is exciting as we move into more connected devices that need to be secured so that your, your data is all kept private. Temperature sensor. Um, I squared C, quadrature decoder, that's basically used for determining the position and direction and velocity of an object, like um, a vehicle axle or bits of robots and stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, you could probably use it for, uh, well, yeah, uh, it has to be used with an encoder, so probably not so much for wearables, I don't know. Uh, operating voltage 1.8 to 3.6 volts, so you could connect your own power supply. Um, and then the dimensions and stuff. Uh, it takes these uh, ML621S rechargeable batteries. That's the, the sensor one that I'm really excited about, takes those. <laughs> uh, let's have a little bit more of a look at the reference guide here. It actually is pretty comprehensive. Module layout for both of those little breakouts we just looked at before. Oh, well, and the, and the little uh, SOC module here. Ooh, so tiny. <laughs> Uh, it's got a parts list. Then here's the. Did I skip a page? Oh, yeah. Um, this is the sort of rectangular one, I believe. IBK Blue IO Nano. Yeah. Um, same deal. you got your pinouts, your schematic and bill of materials, and the tagline. Do, 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 same deal. This is where I figured out what battery it takes. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't have a lot of charging protection, so you have got to make sure that you don't overcharge it. Um, and they tell you the best way to solder it together, which is cool. Um, antenna keep out area. They have a quick start in the back, which is nice, and that's how we get into these other things that they sent as well. Over here, you've got the IDAP Link JTAG. Uh, and let's just take a look at that now. And then a certificate of conformity, which is cute. Uh, so the other things in here are basically these JTAG uh, modules. The interesting thing here is that both, uh, so okay, so the IDAP-M is the CM SysDAP debug JTAG module. What does that mean? Let's take a look. Um, so uh, CM Sys. Uh, I'm, that's how I'm pronouncing it. I'm not sure if that's how you're supposed to pronounce it, but it is now. It's the Cortex Microcontroller Software Interface Standard, which enables consistent device support and simple software interfaces to the pro processor and its peripherals, um, which is cool. It basically makes it easier to get started with new stuff without starting from scratch. Yay! <laughs> so there's a bunch of stuff like uh, vendor independent hardware abstraction layer for Cortex, for Cortex M processors, Etc. Um, if you scroll down here, uh, there's all these different components of the CM system. Um, and if we go all the way down here, you get to CM SysDAP, which is uh, the debug access port. Uh, and basically, this is a standard for uh, working with this. Um, so let's go back to real life. <laughs> uh, so this is a CMSYS DAP compatible J debug JTAG module. Okay, this is a little rectangular guy that's in this uh, electro anti ESD bag. Super cute, huh? And the interesting thing is that this little fellow uh, is pictured here, and that's you know that cool. Um, and then also, it's pictured as being on top of the IDAP link CMSYS debug, uh, CMSYS DAP <laughs> debug JTAG sort of entire module. Um, so this is interesting because, like, you see it right there, right? It's, it looks like that. Seems about the same. Uh, and again, it's pictured uh, in the same sort of thing on the IDAP link packaging itself. And yet. Oh yeah, and you can like see some of its specs here, which is kind of cool. UART USB bridge up to three megabaud. Whoa. <laughs> um, 
Do, do, do. Different types of flashing that you can do from micro SD, from drag and drop by a terminal console. Nice. I don't even know what gang programming is, but that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> um, but then you look at the thing and it actually looks different from the pictures. So whether this is a later revision or an earlier one, I'm not sure. Maybe like took the, did they take the chip and just like embed the whole thing in there so that it's now one module? Uh, not quite. One of these is 11U35 and the other one is 11, wait. Wait, no, they're the same. Why did I thought, think those were different? <laughs> yeah, okay, so they took the chip and basically uh, adapted this module so it's just part of the board now. Hmm. So this must be a later version. That's kind of cool. Uh, IDAP link. All oh, right, this is Rev 4.1, so it's probably just been through a couple of extra revisions since then. What does this say? Rev 3! Ah, mystery solved. Okay, cool. So it's basically the same thing. Um, yeah, uh, as this guy mounted onto a whole uh, piece of hardware so that you can actually interface with it. Uh, and it comes with two different cables. Now, why is that, do you think? It's because, I'm going to spoil it for you right now, <laughs> uh, if you're using this guy, you're going to need these big headers. And if you're going with this guy, then you're going to need these tiny little ones over here, I think. P2, yeah, P2 and P2. Um, so you can uh, do both of them from a single board, which is pretty cool. Um, I like it. Uh, now when it comes to actually programming or using this to program either of your little Blist Nano breakout devices, <laughs> it's really easy to lose these, they're so tiny. It's like working with the Tomu, do you guys remember that? Um, when it comes to programming this stuff, uh, let's take a look at the tool chain. There's a whole GitHub page that talks to you about it. Embedded hardware abstraction library. Here's your Blist Nano uh, in the sort of top right center thing, <laughs> uh, along with the breakout board, the Blue IO uh, and it, Nano. And it tells you about external vendors, SDKs, and libraries required in order to work with this stuff. Pretty cool. Um, and you can check out some code for that, for Linux and Windows, etc. Um, yeah, and I think that's about all I had pulled up for you. Uh, in order to follow this, if you want to get your hands on this as soon as possible, uh, again, low power, Bluetooth 5, uh, NFC A, super exciting, 30 IOs, uh, then go follow the project on crowdsupply.com, crowdsupply.com slash i dash. The URL is in the description. <laughs> um, sign up with your email and you'll be ready to get it as soon as it's available. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, any questions here? Nope, cool. Have an awesome rest of your MCU slash Mailback Monday and we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, probably have some cool stuff. I don't know what yet, but we'll see you. <laughs> Ciao.